What happens when you bring every single Texas school into one conference? Well, let's just say this town ain't big enough for the 20 of us, partner. Yeehaw, what's more American than Texas and college football, baby? Between the FBS and FCS, there are 21 Texas schools. We brought all of them to college football 25, but since you can only hold 20 in a conference, the Cardinal got the short end of the stick. But I still made good on the promise of keeping all Texas schools in the game. In this video, we will travel all across Texas as we rebuild one of the the worst FCS programs. An HBCU in Prairie View a and the Panthers, as we look to make the ascent in Texas. Couple challenges for today's video. First one, we can only recruit out of the state of Texas in year one. In year two, the restriction will start to ease up as we can recruit from some surrounding states like Oklahoma. And then in year three, we finally will be able to access anyone from any state. Good news for us, the number one prospect in the nation, Cotton, is straight out of Texas. Let's go ahead and add four stars where we can find them. And thankfully, the state of Texas is usually a hotbed for talent, so I believe there'll be plenty of prospects to go around for all the Texas schools. Will we get the job done in five years? Well, with no preseason conference selections and a vaunted schedule here filled with Texas opponents, let the games begin and it starts with Incarnate Word. Prairie View was a dominant force in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. Before going on about a 40 year dry spell without claiming a winning season, it's time to get Prairie View back to dominance. I'll give it to them. They have had a few good seasons IRL here in the last handful of years, but still, we're trying to establish dominance now part of the FBS. Taking a look at the uniforms, we have the home, the away, alternate unis, and blackout Panthers. I'm excited to get the all Texas rebuild here and we have a long way to the top with this FCS school. And we're underway in this game, third and seven, keeping it short, fourth and inches, Panthers make the stop. And we're starting this game off with fourth and inches. Let's expect a run. No, it's a pass, short one, they get the completion. Third and seven to handoff draw, he's got space, he's got at daylight 12 into the end zone. We're down 10-0. Cardinal on the board fast. We need Handy, our quarterback, to have one handy performance out here today. The true freshman has his work cut out for him, and he's going to need to find friends on this offense fast. Savage lined up on the outside here. Looks like one of those guys. He gets bottled up, so Handy's going to step up and take off himself. Juke to the left good 20 yard pickup. Running a play action, our tight end gets free. It's Abby's mad laying a mad truck wow that was nuts 30 seconds left here in the second quarter we strike no thomas come on you can tell we got a rebuild on our hands when receivers just lack awareness gonna need to chew those guys up in the war room maybe we got one here with Savrit. No, we just got intercepted. This does not look good. Down 17 to zero. Gonna take a one-on-one -on -one ball to Savage. Getting shut out in our home opener. It gets even worse. Unfortunately, I can't give any good news for the entirety of this game. 31-7, it's desperation mode. Can we get any garbage time points? Just gonna let one fly, got hit while throwing it. That interception's practically gonna seal it. Incarnate Word's gonna walk in here and just run away with this game, 38-7. I've got to hand it to the Cardinals, man. They came, they saw, they conquered. Because we are petty, we still are going to go ahead and get a touchdown in the last few seconds. Garbage time still counts for someone somewhere in their fantasy league, right? After losing by 24 points in the home opener, I need guys like Dante Handy to actually start making an impact on the game. Shamar Savage is a star, so let's see it. Freshman Rodney Oho as well. Come on now. If you couldn't tell, players like Scooter Adams are actual players on the Prairie View a &M roster. That's right. I added a handful of them to our team to make it a little more immersive. Bad news on the recruiting front we're gonna lose guys like cotton bradbury and a bunch of other recruits we're struggling to maintain like when you get offers from texas you're gonna choose prairie view over texas we will still try and hope that one of them does make up their mind but yeah i'm not feeling good about this even on the short end of the stick for players like amari jones three-star gem cornerback he's thinking about tcu thankfully the state of texas is deep so i must keep searching after losing to incarnate word we managed to pull off one in miracle fashion against duke God Got hammered by Ole Miss and now Texas all the way out it starts with the Longhorns the Panthers are clearly a mismatch on paper we're traveling into Austin wish us luck before they bowl right on through us very tough atmosphere to play in Texas will give us a handful let's see if the new kid on the block can upset world beater Texas winning this game starts with one handy play at a time 
Boom, there we go, big completion. After that completion, we are back to the air and we got Savage hauling it in. Once more, what? Not off to a great start in this game. Got under heavy duress, threw it right into the linebacker's hands. Thankfully, the defense is gonna go ahead and give us a second chance. It's just a matter of if any of our guys can get free against these Longhorns. They're tough, 11th toughest place to play to be exact. And that conversion to Oho, takes us inches short of the first down line. You already know Handy's gonna go for it. And that's why we shouldn't. That silly choice now means we're down 17 to zero, just scrapping for any points. When you turn the ball over in your own end zone, it's bound to be bad. Thankfully, we strike back for seven. You blink, and next thing you know, it's 31 to seven. The state of Texas is clearly one of the best in the entire country for this sport. And I believe Longhorns will be one of our toughest tests all rebuild long. With over 21 Texas schools, there are bound to be a few good ones that will give us a run for the money. All the obvious ones, of course, but I'm more curious to see if there's anyone that rises up and I can't call a timeout. I literally was spamming that timeout button, but we lost sight of the clock. At this rate, we should just accept our fate 31-7 at half. Let's see what it will be at the end of this game. Surprisingly, still 31-7 to at this point. We got to stop on defense. Savage busting through the red zone. Third and 11. Let's just keep it here to the tight end. Is that PI? He didn't even move and he got called for PI. We'll take it, ref. I can't complain. Kind of got bailed there. But we'll take anything we can get. Really just plan for pride. Can't wait to see where we are at as a team when we get to year five against the big, bad Longhorn. Because for the next couple of years, we already know who's got our number. Well, if you were a Prairie View fan and you made the travel out to Austin, Texas to watch this game, I just want to say I'm sorry. John Tay Cook and the Longhorns cooked us. Antoine Cotton said, I'm done entertaining this nonsense. Let's go to LSU. Same with gem cornerback Madison Biggs. He just went to the big bad Longhorns. Not looking too good for the rest of the guys on our board. The term dumpster fire is an understatement when looking at year one for the Panthers. Two in six now we have to take on sfa the lumberjacks probably one of our best chances to secure a win they got the slight edge on paper but they are traveling to our house rocking the panther alternates down seven zero in this one let the games begin with an airmail into cornerback danger we're honestly in like panic mode right now on the recruiting front we lost all the four and five star texas talent reasonably so so we've turned our attention to three stars and we're still losing most of them at two and six we are yet to sign one commit. Teams like SFA are out here getting comfy thinking they can go ahead and go for it on fourth down. And shoot, there's nothing we can do to stop them. Might have held them back that one drive, but they are inevitable. 28 to zero, intercepted. This is probably going in for a touchdown. 35 zip in the first half. This is brutal. I don't think you need to be a rocket scientist to know that this game is not going well. Fourth and nine in the first half. I feel like we're already forced to just go for it on fourth down. And I can't believe that can once again, I don't know if that got hit the line. How are you going to lob up a ball that softly to your receiver? Maybe you can show me what you got on the ground. From coaching staff to roster, I can tell you this. No one is safe for next year's team. We're going to scrap it and start brand new again. There we go. We got a wide open receiver. Can't connect. I strongly advise the team to give me their best stuff. If you actually want to be serious about staying on this team next year, like freshman Oho, number 13, coming down with it. Good touchdown, my guy. The score is only 35 to 7 now. We got a chance. There is new life in this stadium for all two. 200 fans into the second half we go don't threaten me with a good time i'll go ahead and get some more points second and goal lumberjacks have our number right now how did we not get in there? Albert Thomas did not reach for it, so it's third and goal at the inches line here. Quick little stick, and Abdi's mad drops it. Okay, fourth and goal. Don't think we should run it because I'll get stuffed, so we just quickly slant it out to Bentley. The comeback is still very much a reality. 35-14, fourth quarter action, but the dream may come to an end on this fourth and 20. Just need to launch one up, essentially. Don't even have time to get destroyed. 36, and the Lumberjacks jack us up and chop down all all of our plans that a comeback. KJ Hartley, that's a good looking young Jack right there. Jacked us off all the way home. On that sour 
note 30 h20 is your final two wins looks to be the ceiling in year one on the recruiting front we have replenished new texas prospects like deontay maryland three-star gem quarterback 83 speed 92 throw power can't be worse than what we got now ain't no way we just found joel barnes from plano texas scholarship immediately gonna go steal some points from someone else sorry manu Cresselius. your 50 points are gonna come through massive for us i mean what the heck i have not found a three-star gem like this in a long time 96 throw power 93 speed 96 acceleration decent accuracy this dude is the truth the hope in the future of panther football is going to come down to barnes and maryland as an ideal number two it's a christmas miracle anthony Bavaro in week 13 our first commit from new london texas he is a gem power back 230 pounder gonna be feeding that big boy the rock why does everyone have to come in and ruin the fun andre's here just got passed up in the final week and there's nothing i can do more i guess the only thing i could have done and probably should have done sooner since he has all b grades is to hard sell him down the list i'll continue to scout out the three stars remove busts and keep our eyes peeled on gems like jason weber here a gem three star safety not gonna lie here i'm not sure how jason got a gem grade 84 speed 65 zone 56 man 76 hit power 75 tackle hmm beggars can't be choosers at prairie view a m disappointing end to the two win season our offense was abysmal so let's fire the coordinator and get a new one just really bad no other way to put it no one really stood out to me not even senior shamar savage ronald jenkins with two interceptions that's the best we could do at least for the new offensive coordinator you'll have a guy in deontay maryland ready to join gm three-star quarterback ready to make a difference moving into the offseason we turn our attention to heisman winner avery johnson kansas state represent man how do we get a prairie view panther on that list well it starts with a good hire here former head coach for eastern michigan jack moon seems to fit the mold good spread of recruiting strategy and tactician let's go ahead and make an offer to him low-key surprised he decided to come because prairie view a m that's not a hot spot on many coaches lists if maryland doesn't work out enrique westfall looks pretty solid pittsburgh texas all said and done here alabama knocks off texas for the college football national championship game arizona state is a surprise addition same with boston college but the rest of the bracket looks pretty legit k-state was a one seed but the heisman was not able to get it done against usc panther fans brace yourself this team's gonna get a whole lot worse with a ton of transfers kane holland's like one of the only ones i'd try to keep but there's no chance with a couple more quarterbacks coming and i'm fine with dante handy leaving so that seals it there will be a new qb at the helm and you know who i think that quarterback will be joel barnes he has committed to prairie view ready to take on the grind with open arms and boy was i glad to see that now into the transfer portal let's go ahead and find him some weapons receivers and running backs from good schools like utah one of the top guys on our board is victor jones jr a deep threat from orlando florida So let's go ahead and battle it out against Abilene Christian and Incarnate Word to convince him this is the place to be. Super important to get these senior additions because these type of players will quickly become a new quarterback's best friend. And we were able to manage a few more recruits here at the end of the transfer portal, which can help out our new quarterback. It's a long shot, but this is a sign of hope. And yeah, this team desperately needs hope. Look at Barnes, man. So inspirational, gold magician, platinum off platform and best thing yet he's a team player westfall is another one of them dudes a quarterback at heart check this out westfall literally has the same physical badges just a tier lower hey i'm just glad the quarterback room is in good hands with these three guys when you take a look at the all texas american conference surprisingly only one five star and at least prairie view was somehow able to get back to the middle of the pack training results are in and we're up to an 80 overall across the board which feels a little generous but you know what our guys were inspired to hit the gym harder than ever before knowing what's at stake going into year number two if you were as curious as i am this is the moment we reveal barnes development trait the moment of truth impact that is actually kind of disappointing for how good he is on his attributes easily still our day one starter maybe enrique westfall has it a little better and no not at all a gem three star with normal dev or shoot i'm sorry westfall did 
not have the gem. I believe that was Deontay Maryland, and he too is an impact quarterback. Regardless, I'm extremely happy with what we got. I'm expecting better results now that in year two, we can recruit from Texas and surrounding states. First guy I see here, Trent Heinrich is from Louisiana and bingo, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Quick little geography lesson. Arkansas is one of the four states that borders. So let's go ahead and snag a couple of the three stars. Louisiana is next up on the list. And here we go. We have a pipeline to the state. So there are a lot more guys interested in coming over. Thank goodness for that. Look at some of the four stars even putting our name in the hat. Continuing further down the list, the third state that borders Texas. Well, that's New Mexico. And boy, I'm glad I'm not restricted to just this state. Oklahoma is the final one. And there should be some good talent here. We'll add a couple three stars interested in us. But most importantly, the state of Texas themselves, obviously going to be stacked. The five stars that have made themselves available to us, Cornell Biggs right here out of San Antonio, Texas, Steve Fanene out of Louisville, Texas, Wayne Casillas, Montel Gayton from Louisiana, another Texas guy represent Dalvin Durant. And that's going to dwindle our list down now to four stars, which we will survey the list and look for someone that is in one of those states we mentioned. A couple Texas guys here. Let's go with Eduardo Choice. Maybe Prairie View AM will be his choice school. Maybe the coaching staff is already turning things around. Vaughn Haynes out of Flower Mound, Texas commits in week one. And so does Juco quarterback Dakota Isaacs. Doesn't hurt to have some depth. When it comes to five stars, there are definitely a lot of good ones. 96 speed gem DB or why not five star gem Dalvin Durant. We'll be lucky to grab those guys, but there are plenty of three star gems. We also found Jimmy Bloom, Brian Berry, Nazir Durth, Daryl Paris, Trent Heinrich. Need to settle in on a good class, especially because Prestige already took a year one dip. I can't lie. I'm really excited to see a new era of Panther football going up against Lamar in week one. Don't forget this moment when critics ranked us 132nd out of 133 teams for championship contenders. Proving the critics wrong starts one game at a time and year two can only get better than year one. Lamar should be the perfect first team to go up against and test try out our new offense. And oh my goodness, what a blunder there on the pitch. Down 7-0, it's a third and 20. Gonna go with a cross screen. Just need to tackle him. Fourth and 15, here we go. Getting down 10 to 0 not ideal but at least it's better than 14 time to see what barnes is all about 17 0 i'm looking for him to step up and start making some plays this team can be proud about in my immediate first feel is simply wow 93 speed makes a difference and 96 throw power as well tack on a roughing the passer call and we're already into the red zone got legs and some zip barnes is the man for the job look at him just fit it in gotta help him out. That's what I'm worried about for most of the game here is our team just selling Barnes as he tries to do all he can. Exciting to see him get on the board here. Prairie View A&M gets their season started. Uh-oh. No way. He caught it. I thought pressure was coming in hot, but Barnes rose above the occasion here. Looking to use his magician badge, going all the way back around, cutting it up the field. Touchdown number zero. Come on now. How could you not do your dance? We're within three. Let's go Panthers. It's extremely important for the defense to continue to hold, but I told you, man, it just takes a good quarterback to start the winning streak. This is a team sport, but when you have an elite quarterback like Barnes, you lift everyone else up around you. And now we can't be having that. Fourth quarter fumble Ruskies. Oh no. Looking to atone for the mistake. He's already back down into the red zone and diving is Dez. Now we're at goal to go territory. He's got 93 speed for a reason. Rushing in his third touchdown of the game. On that big six, Prairie View takes the lead. And yeah, they got a certified dog back here. Defense very much a work in progress. Was not a main focus in the last recruiting. And I'm hoping that lack of attention does not come back to buy us as Lamar gets into position. Super option heavy team right now. It's giving me Air Force vibes. Lamar just shrugs off a tackler first and goal. And up the middle to the fullback. Touchdown. They have the lead again. Looking for week one heroics out of Barnes. My dude was just playing underneath Friday Night Lights just a season ago. And now he's out here in the FBS fumbling balls. Gotta protect your balls at all times. Thankfully, a teammate was able to recover our ball, and now Gallimore is off to the races on that pass. Look at 
the change of field. Just took a couple plays for the quarterback to get his team down into position. If we want to settle for three, we're already there. But why in the world would we do that? Definitely going to go for a touchdown. Fourth and six. This is a lot to think about. A slip screen could get us the yards. So you know what? We're going to send it deliver it out hope the blocks hold and there we go first and goal under 20 seconds left in this one we got a man it's thomas for six with 10 seconds left that's gonna take the lead for prairie view and m that is crazy and out here lamar is gonna work on the flex bone formation i was gonna say they need a whole lot more than just that to get down this field and win it they will not. And talk about going on the road and proving your worth. 1-0 in the young season, Barnes looks really good. Very happy from this performance out of the freshman. His passing line was average, even though he had the game winner. It's the three touchdowns on the ground that really made a difference. Everything is already off to a much better start. I can tell the Panthers are on the verge of blooming as Jimmy Bloom from Louisiana commits. That's a gem running back right there. And even better, we're in the lead with a handful of five stars. I would love to come out and nab three five-star receivers. The reality is about to set in that it's going to be very hard to maintain that lead. Nazir Dirth is next up. Man's going to be holding down the trenches. We are this close to getting Durant, but a week six visit at SMU might be the difference. If it doesn't work out, Montel Gayton and Steve Fanene are looking good as we get closer to locking them in. Also, just casually going really strong here on Cornell Biggs would be a big panther signee ain't no way we got him dalvin durant five-star gem receiver the smu visit must not have gone well and buddy here at a lubbock texas said ain't no way i am a prairie view a m panther true and true let's go ahead and pat it on with some additional points for gaten and Fanene. still hitting some late round recruiting finds eric keen three-star gem now when i set up these visits i did not realize houston christian the huskies would be sixth ranked in the nation with so many prospects visiting and a lot on the line let's go blackout mode halfway through the season we're three and three already one win better than last season but what are they feeding these guys down in houston insane to see a sixth ranked husky team the yukon huskies were an fbs team for much longer than houston here and they're doing something that the other Husky group could not. Barnes already has the star under his name as a true freshman. He's averaging 55 rushing yards per session. Cross body screen. That's going to free up McKinney Ware here if he can just rumble a little faster. A lot of Husky DBs out here are able to strap down our receivers. As you can tell, hardly any green matchups. Important for us to find the open man and connect. Right over the middle, we got a connection to Abdi's Mad. If rookie of the year was a thing, Barnes has his eyes set on it. There are freshmen all American. American bids and if he can beat the Huskies I think his name would firmly be on the map for this year's edition into the red zone just handing it off up the middle getting a few yards at a time methodical to the madness that is the name of the game picking up a block fourth and two we worked so hard to get down here we're going for it it would suck a lot if nothing came out of it but thankfully we don't have to worry about it touchdown for Springer the real test is going to be stopping these guys on offense as they just sling one right across the middle for an easy touchdown sending our best receiver here on a streak it's Dez all the way to the end zone throw up the x i see jones jr getting pressed on the outside but that was a bad matchup all day so thomas is going to be the one to break free surveying ojo's got it over the middle off platform platinum throw we already signed one five-star receiver and in attendance is another one trust me barnes would love nothing more than to be equipped with those guys. And I believe those receivers are getting a glimpse at why they should come. Our guy Barnes will deck you out and make you look like an NFL caliber receiver if you just commit to Prairie View A&M, baby. I'll admit, year two of a rebuild never gets me too enthusiastic, but when I see the plays this quarterback is making, I can't help but to scream for joy. One heck of a performance from this QB. He chose a great week to do it because like I said, everyone's here in attendance to watch he's making handy look like an absolute clown we do not need anyone else manning this team not gonna hate on another man's game but i'm just curious where he decided to transfer to oh my gosh after looking at the film i mean like what school would want him as their quarterback that's hard to say you drop it buddy what the heck was that you had a walk-in touchdown all right let's stop fooling around here 
down we go. 52 yard field goal. I don't have a good feeling about this. Got the accuracy pretty good. Power not too shabby either. What's the flag? In the meantime, he's going to return this back. No kick six. Funny business. Did he rough the kicker? Sure did. Ah, that's better. 37 yard field goal. Much more our speed. Let's go ahead and dial in here. Good accuracy. Decent power. It is off the pole what note to self recruit a kicker 21 14 in this one we have to work extra hard because of that missed kick fourth and goal at the three yard line they are refusing to go down and we refuse to bend but our refusal to bend is in vain next couple drives they cash in and now have the lead all over again it's gonna make for one theatrical finish we'll start this thing off with a handoff up the middle mckinney's got space so far so good let's keep this thing moving down by three we are gonna go for the win not a field goal there's plenty time to do it i just don't want to leave a ton of clock on the board the sack did not help our cause one bit third in 19 gonna call for a speed dig over the middle i think that's a great play ojo gets the first impressive pickup there on third and 19 my goodness prairie view into the red zone just gonna step up slide down for seven now we're cooking dumping it to the big tight end he's holding on first and goal chew clock with that activated i'm gonna go with the handoff draw up the middle stuffed 15 seconds on the clock we could have called a timeout but we chose not to instead we're gonna step up fall forward timeout running the rock feels a little risky but that's exactly what we're gonna do and hit the outside for the win with five seconds we take the lead Houston Christian in shambles. These Huskies don't know what hit them. Expert craftsmanship on the final drive. They only have time for this last deep bomb. He almost caught it, but that's going to fall to the ground. And with that celebration ensues, knocking off number six in the nation, Houston Christian. What a massive win for this program. Prairie View a and led by Joel Barnes, baby. I am here for this. And you know who also is here for this? Every other prospect that was in attendance, good chance they commit. Snagged Trent Heinrich from the grasp of the Raging Cajuns. Even more important, five-star gem Cornell Biggs, number one player in the nation out of San Antonio. Welcome to the Panthers. Montel Gayton, you are loading up this receiver room. I'm so excited, man. Next week, Steve Fanene visits us and that can complete the trifecta. Ladies and gentlemen, we got it. Your newest Panther, Steve Fanene. Capping off a really good year too with a commit Juan Fontaine four-star gem receiver just juicing up this room even more all texas boys represent seven and five is an incredible year to surge six and three in conference play only behind tcu abilene christian texas a m north texas and texas after beating six and oh houston christian they only won one more game the rest of the year the turnaround needs to be studied two big wins to kick off the year before dropping the next three went on a roll with a three-game win streak dropped another two before we're finishing up with two more wins over UTEP and Texas Tech. So it was a couple wins, couple losses, couple wins, all in batches. 2,900 yards, 25 touchdowns to five ints, pretty good. Draymond Gates, sophomore linebacker with nine sacks. But all in all, I expect the team numbers to skyrocket this next season, especially on offense. We're going to have a host of dudes. Looks like DJ from Florida State was never the answer. Luke Cromenhoke waiting in the wings, finally got his Heisman moment. 3,700 yards, 51 touchdowns downs to four ints. Prairie View a ms going bowling at the Military Bowl against Wake Forest. Getting a bowl game is great, but a cherry on top. 10th best recruiting class in the nation. That is better than any other Texas team except for the Longhorns themselves. Unfortunately, we could not finish the season off on a high note. Wake Forest beats us 39-20. Let's move into the offseason, sure up some things, and get ready for an impactful year number three. Three Texas schools represented in this year's classic. Texas, North Texas, and Texas A&M. However, none of them got to the end. USC claims victory over the Heisman winner in Florida State. Lee Abdismat, our number one tight end target here, trying to leave. No, can't persuade him. Richard Gallimore, maybe we can get him to stay. There we go. With the portal opening up, we have a handful of three stars, especially on the defensive line that would bolster up this team. So let's go ahead and add them. Check it out here. Transfer left tackle from Texas A&M Commerce. Maybe we can get him over at Prairie View A&M. A lot of Tarleton State guys hitting the portal. I can't even go for a couple of their really good ones like Mills. Success 
successful campaign, we're beefing up that line. Bring them in, all in. Literally just got a brand new offensive line from the portal. Let's take a look at the absolute haul from last year, led by the receivers, Montel Gayton, elite dev specimen, Juan Fontaine, a four-star gem impact, Steve Fanene, the star, and most surprising to me, five-star gem receiver, Dalvin Durant, only star dev, and the lowest overall in our depth chart. That's a little odd if you ask me. Thankfully, five-star gem Cornell Biggs was a massive haul. 80 overall elite dev. Year three and the training wheels are off for the Panthers. They can now recruit from anywhere in the United States. So let's jump into year number three, starting off on the road against Incarnate Word before taking on ranked North Texas Mean Green. Successful week one on the road, getting the win against Incarnate Word. Player of the week, it's Mr. Barnes. Starting off the season with a bang and starting off the season going after some top dogs like Austin Schilling, John Duggan, TJ Stevens, Greg Lockett, Dwayne Carmen. These five five stars are next level. Can't forget about Josh Pankey, Sean James, and Colby Turner, three four-star gems. The battle for Austin Schilling is just about done. I think Clemson is his choice. That was a quick one. So let's get rid of him from the board, get our points back, and instead schedule visits for some of the guys that we are pursuing. I'll take 10 points off a couple of them. I don't want to do it too much, but I think that will free up at least one more visit here. This season is off to an unexpected start. Prairie View 1-3, North Texas 0-3. They were ranked. They were in the national championship play playoffs last year. Not sure what's going on for both of these squads that on paper 85 overall look good. Jumping in to investigate, my initial thought is that we need to wait until our receivers we brought in are older because yeah, I don't see any of them out here right now and it's gonna have to be another season until they get on the field which in the long run it makes sense it really does because if we can preserve the red shirt we'll get more usage out of them and i want them ready for a national championship run let's go with a little mountain swing dump it out to gallimore here stuffed now why north texas is struggling i can't tell you they're looking to get right against us up seven zero Let's not be the catalyst they need. Sending them backwards to 0-4 would feel so satisfying. Back to the ground game. It's really working against the Eagles. Third and goal here. We need to see what Barnes can do on the slant to Dez. No good. Not a fan of that last drop. Ready to get the old out and the new in. Second time was not a charm. They lurked it. Low scoring affair. 7-0 at the two-minute warning. They keep stacking the box, but our blocks are holding and it's going nicely. Transfer portal offensive line holding up for the most part. Let's see if we can go ahead and actually cash in here. Slant, good move from Thomas, drops it. Deja vu, third and goal again, drilled for a sack. This time on fourth and goal, let's just settle for three and get our team on the board. Another chance back in the red zone. Let's keep it with the quarterback. Barnes has a lane and scores. Touchdown number zero. Panthers back on top. Clutch stops and good work by the defense defense gives us another chance third and 16 just gonna chuck one up come back thomas secures it racing back to the line we're gonna go with a tight end attack but nothing really panned out so scrambling out to his right it's barnes picking up the first good decision making here and he's gonna make another one to lehman who sheds a tackler touchdown with two seconds left in the half when life gives you lemons you make lehman gallimore at quarterback is the wildcat position and he just dumps it out to ship running back to running back down to the inches line offensive holding there disrupted that play instead of a running back helping a running back it's back to barnes into the corner des caught it touchdown north texas offense has been stifled all game it's not the time to blow it what are we thinking secondary wow he just got on through and our corner gave up on that route up by three sending a man in motion out to our right get around that corner yes barnes going flying in and out into the red zone this man could be a receiver easily the way he moves it and the way he makes good decisions all of our timeouts are remaining so we're honestly cashing in a little early here am i right or am i right onside kick it is recovered as expected north texas stacks the line looking to stop our run play back to the right side of the field it's a stretch in gallimore's open tried to make a move but it's all good first down now officially official victory formation kneel down fans that showed up today love 
to see this outcome. Send an all Prairie View home happy 31-28. Mean Green falls to 0-4. They stay sputtering out here. Honestly, a down year looming for us as well. Let's go ahead and find out what the rest of year three has in store. Josh Pankey's now our little Pankey. He is a four-star gem offense alignment. Welcome to the Panthers. And if we can just hang in there a little longer, we could get the edge over Alabama for Duggan, over TCU for Stevens, over LSU for Greg, over Michigan for Carmen. At the very least, we'll lock in TJ Stevens, five-star gem DT, and bring in yet another five-star gem receiver. Colby Turner, four-star gem quarterback as insurance, and recruiting is shaping up very nicely. After the win against North Texas, we went on to just squeak out some more wins. Three-point victory over Houston Christian, over Houston. We just had Houston's number. SFA beat them by five, then lost to UTSA before knocking out UTEP, ending the season on a loss to Texas Tech. The All-Texas Conference will make you pay. Finished in the middle of the pack. What's more surprising to me is the Longhorns going six and six. TCU and Abilene Christian playing for the championship game. Shout out to little bro Texas A&M Commerce for having a better season than Texas A&M themselves. Both seven and five, but Texas A&M Commerce had a better record in the Texas Conference. Despite the six and six record, Barnes had a year two leap that was incrementally better. And all in all, I think the team's in good position for year number four. Looking for continued improvement out of the defense. That will be a key to watch out for. Before we get into year number four, just another year, another top 12 recruiting class. Second best in the conference, just behind TCU, who is in the national championship run. Abilene Christian and Sam Houston have been rebuilding. Impressed with what they have done. Excited to see what they can do. Whereas other schools like Houston Christian have fallen off. SFA, Lamar, they remain towards the bottom. Out of our all Texas conference, Texas schools have had a knack for making this playoff bracket. And again, they fall in the championship game. TCU loses to Ole Miss. Richard Gallimore has been stepping up as a running back. Unfortunately, he wants to leave and with very low chance, we couldn't get him back. I wanna try to keep at least one of these offensive linemen. So far, not good for Brown, but success on Chester Runyon. Yet to see a four star in the transfer portal that we can recruit. It looks like we can vulture from fellow Texas schools like Tarleton State and SMU. Also taking a look at Ringo from North Texas, Taj Ertz from Texas A&M. Excited about the possibilities here. All good to go and ready for the next season after a strong portal. Colby Turner, backup quarterback, is a star and ready to jump in when needed. Montel Gayton and Steve Fanene, both up to an 88 overall with attribute boosts. Some young underclassmen ready to cook. If they can't get the job done, true freshman Carmen Elite Dev is just waiting his turn. Also just want to call out here that Barnes, our junior quarterback, now has 99 throw power. With all of these weapons, there's no excuse why we should not be cooking up and down the field. TJ Stevens, who we just brought in, ready to plug up the middle with his six foot four, 314 pound frame, elite death. Cornell Biggs with a big year to leave. The secondary continues to look stacked when our seventh DB has 99 speed. Up to an 88 overall after training results, this team's ready to go the distance. Another top tier recruiting class awaits the Panthers as we look to complement what we've already built up to this point. Check out Dion Crumpler, four-star gem corn with 99 speed out of high school. Them Florida boys are quick. I predict this will be the best year yet as we face our rival Texas Southern. This is a heated matchup between the Panthers and the Tigers. Still no preseason love in the All-Texas Conference. All the usual suspects, Texas, Texas Tech, TCU. Got an Abilene Christian kicker up in here. And then Texas Southern's captain on offense tight end Marquez Springs but yeah more usual suspects across the board off to a quick start two and one on the season but you know who's off to a quicker start Texas Southern the Tigers are three and oh this rivalry game's gonna be a good one a lot of history between these two Texas FCS schools and more history gonna be written in this chapter I'm really surprised Barnes doesn't have a star the man has 93 speed and 99 throw power just you can't be just any quarterback and get away like that trust me this is very rare to have a quarterback like this. Only guys like Lamar Jackson are on the same level. If NFL teams know what's right, they'll go and draft Barnes here in the NFL draft in just a year or so. Gayton and Fanene on both outside windows here. 
That one was just shadowed very well. Usually not a good idea to take shots like that when you don't have a ton of space. Maybe on this play, we have more room to work. Instead, Texas Southern defense threatening, picks up the first down. These guys can cash in if they make a right decision and no. Now, here we go. Offense out here ready to sling it. 99 throw power on the money. Dez could not catch the last one, so we'll go ahead and keep it in front. Fanene makes a snag. And on fourth and one with these weapons, you gotta trust them. Sending running back back in motion let's dump it to him see if he can make a move really not panning out on the offensive front so we'll go ahead and trust Fanene. he was getting open wow intercepted i'm telling you texas southern defense is pesky right now they have the lead Fanene has a step 99 throw power it's on the money you can't miss rain or shine you need to hit that 10 out of 10 times just like this dot to Dez. He caught this one and he's in. 21 did something for us and now it's up to the defense on fourth down to do their part. Man, another dink and dunk. Texas Southern has a knack for getting those yards when they need it, just like here. Again, this could be one of the most brilliant plays or one of the most boneheaded. A fake field goal, fourth and 12. He's got a wide open man, but he couldn't get the pass off. That would have been a touchdown. Unbelievable, man. Barnes looking to get a drive for the win. Haynes on a big play. No more playing around to our right, dumping it to hops. He breaks free of one and after nine, yards the blitz coming in hot tight end open delivers under immense pressure let's go ahead and evaluate will gaten win a one-on-one -on -one ball well doesn't matter in this case des is there scrambling searching just taking off big first and goal another play taking us out to our right walk the dog take the lead one point game here we cannot give this thing up fourth down even more important fourth down right here if they get to field goal range they can win the ball game but they're not going to gates is gonna seal this rivalry game with a big pick thank goodness we recovered i did not mean to pitch it like a madman i thought there was a guy right behind me and uh the adrenaline must have got to my head a sigh of relief a steady seven points every quarter holds off the tigers in a winning fashion so that's a good game for prairie view any year it's a good year when you can knock out the rival Keyshawn osbon knows what's up four star free safety welcome to your home a couple more big four star gem signees here martin uche tony north continuing to build an offense that is loaded let's see if the good times can keep rolling in waco bring on the baylor bears back in the alternate yellow and purples again it's a good luck charm as we are four and one in the young season talk about a blazing hot start baylor is three and two so honestly not too shabby either for them no game is a gimme game because football just means so much more here in texas you're gonna have to fight fourth and inches no doubt about it we're going for it cameron funches drops it no when i say we'll have to fight for it i clearly did not envision having to fight for it on the first drive turning it over. Gonna need to keep an eye here on this big third down. That screen was a nifty one. Thankfully, the DB made a tackle. For our mistake, giving up three points is not a bad punishment. Could have been way worse. Down seven to 10. I believe we can come back and it starts with a ball to Gaten. Number five cashes in gives us that lead again. Under 30 seconds here. First half action winding down to a close. Let's take a shot to Ojo. And oh no, the safety was there for it in a big way. Need to kick it into gear with this drive. We can at least tie it and go for the win, either on a two-point conversion or another drive. Need to count on players like Gaten to go up and win a one-on-one -on -one ball. So it didn't happen this time. No big deal. We'll go with the speed dig. Let Dez catch and run. Make a move. Tumble on in. Ringo says bingo. Easy touchdown. Ask and you shall receive. We have an opportunity to win the game. 21 apiece. Fumbles. Strip sack. Recovered with one hand by 95 scoop and score baylor fans going crazy that was a huge heisman like moment the defender believes now the pressure is on to answer back gonna do a slip screen with some juice hopples is running with purpose my goodness at this point if we score a touchdown i think we go for a two let's just try to end this thing sounds like the best course of action in my book read option he's got it little showboat, little bounce around and score. Coach on the same page as the offense. Panthers already knew they wanted to go for two and cha-ching, cash in Baylor fans in agony. This drive is about to be agony though, 
as they have all their timeouts. Gonna have to step up play after play after play. Can't let anyone escape. Keeping it all in front. Baylor inches closer and closer to field goal range. Taking their little dinks and dunks. That's clamps. Good news right here. We hold them and they burn their final timeout. Giving some more cushion here. Eight seconds left. Going to the sideline, Jenkins with a huge interception. Old man Jenkins here seals the game for the Panthers. Baylor can't believe it. What a start to the year for Prairie View a &M. These Panthers are legit. Having their most successful campaign to date in the FBS. After that win, our number one target, Hodel, is in five-star DT looking to join his boy on the line. This is gonna be a formidable front. It gets even better. Dion Crumpler ready to crumple any receiver. 99 speed, good luck getting past him. Five and two about halfway through. Abilene Christian knocked us off. Looking to finish strong against our final five Texas schools. You think you have something good going? Well, then you start losing. SFA beats us down. UTEP and Texas Tech finishes us off. We finish seven and five on the season again. We can't get over that seven win hump. Instead, the All Texas Conference got shaken up in a big way. Rice, number six in the nation, eight and one the conference, 12 and one season. They win the American Conference. Texas A&M fell at their hands. Tarleton State had a bounce back season. The Jacks, 15th ranked in the nation. What a year. Abilene keeps finding a way to win games. And shoot, man, teams like Texas, Texas Tech, Houston, they stay at the bottom like us, a Prairie View Panthers. 3,100 yards, 33 touchdowns, just a couple more ins than we would like to see. Good looks from redshirt freshman Fanene, 11 touchdowns, 769 yards. Not many takeaways from the defense. That's got to change going into this next year. Miles Henningsen, representing for UCF, takes home the Heisman, and somehow, some way, Prairie View gets snubbed from a bowl game at all. So we'll turn our attention to Rice in the three seed. And to be honest, this bracket just looks fun. Boise State, a four seed. Louisville, a one seed. UCF, Cincinnati, Arizona, Miami, all in there. Good times, just no Prairie View. Three players trying to transfer in. Man, they're good ones. Lanning, 79 overall redshirt freshman, and Chansey, 79 overall sophomore. Both DBs. We can't have them leave. Landing's out. Chancy, it's up to you. Let's take a chance. Thank goodness we're bringing in Mr. 99 Speed at DB because we're losing two good ones and we're going to lose bowling. Training results are in on paper. We go down a little bit, but the offense improves and that's what's key here. I think up to an 89. We have a lot of guys that can make it rain. Prestige is up. The recruits are coming in. This next year is going to be the best one yet. Schedule not looking too crazy except for the Rice Owls. You know they went insano mode last year. First round exit in the playoffs but nonetheless, they're a tough team. Panthers on a mission so far. 6-0, 56-19 win over at South Alabama, 42-28 Iowa State, 38-7 against the FCS opponent. Then all Texas schools at this point in the juncture fell by three touchdowns or more. Let's go see if this team is the real deal taken on last year's real deal, Rice Owls. I think if we can get through a team like this, then we can get through any team in the all Texas conference. Our offense and defense rejuvenated out here we have a converted safety playing middle linebacker with platinum robber no need to rob today when jermaine sacking up the qb fanene durant carmen and gayton all four of our five stars out here starting i love to see it and you know what i love even more this carmen guy 99 speed how do we miss him? He has 99 short route running and then 99 speed. That's a dang shame we missed him there. We're not gonna miss, well, let's go. Offense stuttered there, so Coborn back on defense. The converted safety feels so twitchy. He can change direction in the blink of an eye. You can tell some teams just have the it factor and there are a lot of things going the Panthers way, regardless of what it says on paper. For starters, this quarterback Barnes has changed the Panther program for eons to come. Number zero needs a statue when we're done here. He's the man. Cameron Funches for the touchdown, arguably the best offense in Panther history, and no doubt the best quarterback in Panther history. I still think back to year one when we had Handy, and I cannot believe we managed to get through that season. Wish him all the best IRL, but for the college football sim, it was not cutting it one bit. Fourth and one gonna go big we only need one yard but why settle for one when you can throw a bomb to durant for much more our fourth best receiver on the roster carmen is a hidden gem honestly 99 speed you don't get that just anywhere as Barnes tries to keep this thing alive. Okay, that was silly. Third and 40, we just wanted to show we have the chops for it. Deep bomb, and he's got it. Game in, 
touchdown. What did I say? This offense is built different. We add challenges to our plate just for the heck of it. Barnes, oh my goodness, that was nifty quick turn to the left and out of there the c parted and it was wide open the rest of the way up by two possessions here in the fourth quarter all we gotta do is wind the clock out up the middle again even with a blitz ensuing let's go ahead and send him in motion we'll call his line if we need him and we'll just go ahead and take a touchdown to Fanene. More than happy to go with the Panther receiver here. That'll end it. 35-14 with two minutes to go. I don't think they come back one bit. They came back a little bit. 22 points in the fourth quarter, but the final 42-28 looms large for the Panthers. Joel Barnes has a trophy on his mind. 7-0 they go. The amazing season continued. Rice became ranked. Houston was ranked. Beat them both. Then we lost to the Jacks, man. Definitely upset our group of guys so we took it out on utsa utep and texas tech 13th in the nation we have championship football against number nine texas a m you can guarantee the winner of this game will get in to the college football playoffs winning the all texas conference is a big deal and look who's here to meet us it's the home of the 12th man the aggies at a texas a m our big bro that's right, Prairie View A&M, one of the satellite schools. Actually, now that I think about it, they have to be related, right? They have A&M in the name, or maybe they don't have to be related. Shoot, I might have my facts straight. I know Texas A&M Commerce is the little bro of Texas A&M here, but I don't know about Prairie View A&M. Regardless, two A&M schools going at it. By all accounts, Texas A&M here is big bro. We are little bro. So much at stake for the 11-1 Panthers. So much at stake for the 11-1 Aggies. Gonna give Willette's go a break and snap it to number two direct carry here plunging forward i trust our group of receivers against anyone out here just like i'll trust gaten to pick up the first big play here spreading everyone out gonna step into a throw to finene he has beaten number six from AM. I know we're going for it all right now in year five of our rebuild but we have a staff out here Full of young guys. These young guys outside of Barnes, the quarterback, have another one to two years of competing. Guaranteed they will be back into the playoffs if it weren't for this year. Barnes doesn't have the luxury to wait, so we're trying to make it right here, right now. Fumble recovery. Should be coming back with a holding penalty, right? Marching down into the enemy territory over the middle. Fontaine working the red zone first and goal. Gonna step up, find an open lane. It's a touchdown for number zero let's go a and m prairie view seven three ball game back into the red zone we got an open man let's hit him oh what an interception from number five or number six right there he just took his hands up should have lobbed it out of cummins reach third and ten this one is back and forth corner strike bingo gaten oh he dropped it. Need additional points here, man. We can't keep flirting around in this one. Was just trying to warn of this. a &M scores. Now we're down by three, and we're taking a big hit. This stadium is alive, I'll tell you that much. Gaten almost came down with it. Fourth and two, Barnes dial in. Twelfth man getting loud out here. Just a quick dump to Funches. He dropped it. I need someone to explain me how Funches dropped that last pass, man. I'm having a hard time relying on him in these clutch moments. I don't have the best feeling about this but we're gonna line up and go with a strong toss to the right and it got blown up what should have trusted my gut now we're down two touchdowns series of unfortunate events right now maybe we can redeem it right here all alone it's Gaten, and he has it money touchdown back within a score 99 throw power right into the basket two point conversion was successful and just like that we're in business we can score and get the extra point and win this game trust me you better believe i saw circle getting wide probably should have rewarded him and just hit him for that last one but i'd like to take my time choose some clock matter of fact you know what i'm just gonna score forget the clock we need points Let's do it as efficiently as we can. Third and 19. This is crazy. What's it going to be? A speed dig over the middle. Intercepted. Well, good thing we didn't start chewing clock. Defense can make a hole. And that is precisely what happens now out of timeouts. We have 50 seconds to become a hero in this one. No need to go for it all right away. Let's just take the easy read, quick drag to Funches, let him go to work and bulldoze along the way. Seriously, let's just take it one snap at a time. Need a bit of urgency, but don't need to go crazy. All right, just kidding. We might need to go crazy. Let's hurry up the guys. No timeouts is dwindling our clock a 
awful lot. And look who just got toasted. It's AM's DB 16. Just let game in, get right past him. In the championship game, you just can't afford to do that. Pending the extra point here, we go ahead, load it up. Looks accurate and down the middle. Up by one. Let's finish the job. Taking the kick return back. Here comes number zero. 15 seconds left. They're throwing a all go. Quarterback scrambles. Timeout. The important thing to note is that they don't have to go for everything right this play. They'll take their check down and live to see another down. That's a good breakaway. But unfortunately for them, that is not field goal range. So they're out of time. Down to a final shot in the championship game. No good. Disrupted. And go crazy, Panther fans. You walk into Texas A&M territory and gig them down. Eight catches, 188, and three touchdowns for Junior Gaten. That is a high quality Texas win, and here is the Texas Cup to prove it. Now let's get to the natty. Joel Barnes got Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award winner. What a season, about 4,000 yards, 48 touchdowns, but he didn't get the Heisman. It went to a Miami receiver. Best quarterback of the year award, but snubbed in the Heisman. Teron Goings had a season for the ages, best linebacker award. The All-American season from Barnes, Decent season here on the ground. One heck of a season from Dalvin Durant, Fanene, and Gaten. The trifecta from the same recruiting class after all. They're all NFL bound. And huge contributions on defense from Jermaine, Trent Heinrich, 11 sacks apiece, Goings with three ints, Biggs with a big three. All of that production is good enough to get us into the bracket. Let's take on Wisconsin in the first round, and then if we can survive that, it'll be number one Miami. Despite the loss, Texas A&M got the final spot, so they get a chance at redemption. Taking on the good old Badger in round one of the playoffs, it starts here. Barnes, the number one quarterback in the nation. He wants to show everyone why he deserved the Heisman after all, and I don't know what that noodle pass was but at least Fontaine went back and caught it not sure if he had a lot of wear and tear or what but heck let's keep the drive alive up the middle well let's go let's get it man ready to show Wisconsin defense what we are all about over here a few quick plays we're already into first and goal territory looks like the offense sure came to play today and the offensive line great protection letting our quarterback scramble it in defense still on the hook looking to see if they came to play today fourth down we'll hold them to three four field goals for the wisconsin bunch let's go ahead and get all of it back with a touchdown that is the plan after all over the middle to fontaine touchdown badger fans you ain't getting away easy now under a minute in the half we can go ahead and make quick work of this defense. When you sharpen your skills in the All Texas Conference, teams like Wisconsin don't threaten you that much. And yes, that's me talking smack because I think everyone knows Wisconsin is a good team. It's just not Texas tough. Working the clock down and taking six more points. Very productive half from the Panthers. These guys are addicted to field goals. What can I say? 21 19. I want another touchdown so I can get out of reach. Two possession lead would be perfect. Can't always get what we want. We're down 26-21, but I can go ahead and take this deep bomb shot and get it right back to what let's go. Running back lined up on the outside. Can't keep up. Fourth and 16. This is massive desperation mode. Quick strike over his head. He was open. My dude was wide. That soft coverage did not stop him. And I guess all we can really say is we're thankful. So we'll capitalize on that and quickly strike back to what let's go. Get the extra cushion we need. Check off the first round of the college football playoffs 36 26 our offense was superior indeed texas a&m also did what they had to do and now they're facing middle tennessee state while we got miami for the fiesta bowl you better believe we equipped the blackout uniforms the canes are tough in fact the toughest team in this playoff bracket but it's a new era of texas football prairie view a&m is on the big stage it's their time to shine and start a new era of panther football down a quick 7-0 Nothing like spreading everyone out and knowing your guys are going to beat some of their guys. Still believe that this offense is just waiting for their turn to shine. Inconveniently outstretched the hand. The linebacker blocked us. So we're going to go back and show him we are not to be 
messed with. Fourth and three. Lobbin went up. Out of reach for Durant. Well, this is embarrassing. Down 14-0. Who is going to step it up for this Panther offense and get us some points? I know there are a lot of capable receivers out here, and I think Gaten's going to be the first one to give us a favorable strike. Now in the red zone after that big chunk play, we can go back to him while getting hit first and goal. The all Gaten show here in the two-minute drill. But who's going to finish it off for us? It's none other than Funchess having a fun time out there. Big boy six, and we're on the board. I don't know what's worse than giving up a touchdown right off the rip after you go and score one. Maybe throwing an interception to 34. The craziest part of all this is that we're still in the game miraculously. First and goal. A lot of errors on our side, yet we can cash in and make it one touchdown of a deficit rather than two. I believe in this team, and I believe in Carmen getting the touchdown. This Miami bunch is a juggernaut, I must say. Having a hard time keeping up right now. So we're just forced to take bombs. He got it in between two defenders. One thing leads to another two minute drill for the win or tie if we decide in the moment to go for one point instead of two. Getting things started here, Durant to the outside. No doubt in my mind, we have the talent to get the job done. Just a matter of how much protection are we gonna get when we're taking our shots. Let these Texas boys cook out here, am I right? A lot of success on this drive, so much so we can go ahead and hand it off and still find success. Play action underneath, it's Durant extending that play. Handing the ball back to what let's go, making a move, first and goal. Dobbs in for a couple snaps at running back, fighting forward down to the one. Trusting in the ground and pound, well, let's go, is going to top it off. And here we go. Two point opportunity. It's all on the line. I'm going to call a stick right now, even though a handoff up the middle looks really tempting. I think I'm going to hand it off. If the blocks hold, there's only three guys rushing. There we go. Get in there. Yes. What a friggin' audible here in the Fiesta Bowl. It's going to come down to a final 10 seconds here for the Canes. Prairie View A&M, Cinderella story brewing, about to knock off the one seat. Given lots and lots of cushion out here, time is winding down. They're gonna settle for a final shot. Expiration, out of bounds, we win. Fiesta Bowl champions, what just rocked the Hurricanes world? That's right, the Panthers did. Can't make this up, man. It's a Texas revenge game in the Rose Bowl semifinal to get to the national championship game. Worked hard to get to this point, already racked up the Fiesta Bowl. Let's add a Rose Bowl trophy to our case. But the ultimate goal is obvious. It's the national championship, which is right after this. I plan on showing no mercy to Texas A&M. All they do is stand in our way from glory and Funchess is not about to let that happen. I think it's safe to say A&M has remembered what we did to them at their home stadium. Clearly not letting it go as they're quickly putting up 21 points against us. It's gonna be a shootout till the very end, which Texas school will remain when it's all said and done. Right now, I don't think it's time to hit the panic button. We still have a quarter and a half to play. And honestly, looking good right now, moving down the field, we'll strike right down the heart punches again. Just worried about this AM offense. They clearly came to play. Dumping one short, make the tackle. That's a four. Textbook work there, flips the field for us. Now we're in the driver's seat to go get some more points. So yeah, why don't we go ahead and exactly do just that? Look who's open in the end zone. Funches keeps the feet in bounds. Touchdown, we're all tied up. That's a three piece from Cameron Funches. One of the unsung heroes of this offense. I'm gonna need him to do it again. Cause a and just does not back down from a fight. How are we gonna throw that out of reach? Past midfield, still down by that elusive seven points. Points. I can sense another one going down to the wire. Rose Bowl's even blaring Mo Bamba. They know the stakes of this one, and I know how good our receivers are. AM couldn't stop Gaten the first time. They're not stopping them the second time. The drive of champions. This could determine who gets into the natty. Successful offense here means a W for us. A stifle drive here means the end game not good news. And just like that, a couple more runs from walking out of here alive, up the middle, final timeout burned. I want to get as close as humanly possible if I am taking a field goal in this situation. Fourth and inches, tie game, I don't care. I need that extra inch. Thank you. I wanted to ensure on this next play, I can chew all the clock out after running it. For all Prairie View a and back home and those that made us in the stands, go crazy. Your team is 
going to overtime, I thought we were going to pull it out. That is a 26 yard shank. I can't believe what I just witnessed right there. Like that is textbook flop. We're stuck to three points. So this is kind of a bad case scenario here. Wanted to get more than three, but we couldn't move the rock. So this time our kicker comes through, of course, which is victory. I must have missed the part where a &M had a chance on offense. So the kicker becomes the hero regardless. Had me sweating to the very last minute. Quite literally the bane in Texas a and side. It's finally time we make it to the national championship game. What a five-year turnaround for the Prairie View Panthers. Rocking their yellow jerseys, purple helmets, and ready to take on their fearsome opponent, Ole Miss. Drama begins to build in the national championship. 17-14 Ole Miss. But Look who's knocking Barnes and Prairie View. Gonna call for one of those jet touches. Gaten stifled. So we just spread them out, call a stick. Why did we pump it? And denied. We had open targets so much so I'm frustrated that it didn't work. So I'm gonna go for it again. Thankfully, Funches secures. Was about to be an unhappy camper if we walked away with nothing there. Get around, well, let's go. Not the direction I had in mind for that last play. We'll go ahead and trust the run game once more. Mick Mahan, there it is. He cashes in. It's like a three-headed monster back there in the backfield. You got Dobbs, you got Willetsko, and Mick Mahan. Old Miss offense can also sizzle. We're gonna need to dial up this goal line defense. Got them back to third and goal first couple plays unsuccessful they're going with a short cross i thought that was a flag on the play but no we're good successful stand we'll hold them to three and we can go ahead and end this thing one drive this drive it has to be right here i'll choose some clock along the way as we scramble out to our right and there's a first down i see how much they're stacking this box and putting one-on-one -on -one coverage to our two guys on the outside i think they have a little too much faith in their dbs it is gonna come back and bite them in a major way never sell out on the run when you're facing prairie view a m panther nation let's friggin ride i tasked the defense to finish it off for us but they couldn't do it so we'll recover that please and now we can get out of here they're literally doing it again like i can't help myself i'm gonna run all go and just chuck one up. Look at this. The speed just absolutely cooks the slot corner. Those are the easiest touchdowns I've seen the whole playoff run. Why are they pressing up so hard? Don't you know these receivers are going to the NFL in just a year or two? I think we taught Ole Miss a very important lesson today. You don't mess with Texas. They keep trying to play with us and mess with Texas, and they're going to get this recovery. Unbelievable. Wow. I can't believe the luck they're having on their side. But at the end of the day, this town is just not big enough for the two of us, Ole Miss. I'm sorry, guys. It's over. Your run ends now. And for Prairie View AM, give it up to the national champions of the world. Small Texas school with big dreams. And nothing bigger than running through this playoff bracket, the Cinderella team and taking out some of the best teams along the way. Coach, Sir Sponge, caps off to you, my man. You don't mess with Texas, and you surely know this town is not big enough for the two of us. Barnes was on a mission in his final game in his collegiate career. With that, man, I had so much fun bringing you this team builder experiment. I hope you enjoyed what it would look like if all Texas conference schools and FBS, FCS United into that single conference. And look what happens. Five years down the road, Prairie View a and wins it all. So with that, soak it up with your boy King Sponge. Hit that subscribe button. And I'll catch you all in the next College Football 25 banger.